guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Popper's Ladder by Paul Stapleton. It is by Bed Sit Games and it plays two to four players, takes about an hour and a half to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Popper's Ladder you're playing as a popper. You'll have the choice of between one and eight different characters and you'll select one of those guys and they all have humble beginnings. And in the game you're basically going to be playing in a tournament and it tells you up here that in the town of Garolium there's a tournament that is to be had and all the poppers are going to attempt to do three out of the five different virtues. Your player board will tell you the different virtues and how you can acquire them and if you're able to get the first to the three in the game you're going to be the winner. Now of course there's trials and tribulations, there's going to be different locations as well as different challenges and quests as well as shops to acquire certain items and as you go through you'll have an interesting unique trusty sidekick. You're going to have a canary, crow, magpie or one of the other magical birds that can also be trained and gives you special abilities. You'll be moving your popper along with your bird to do certain actions, to collect certain resources, to hopefully get three out of the five virtues, and if you do so, you'll win the game. Anyway, let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what's in the game, and then I'll show you how to play. So here we have Popper's Ladder, and I went ahead and set it up so you can see what it looks like, and we'll probably be showing you a two-player game in a bit here, but for right now, let's just talk about what's on the board and what the contents of the game are. First of all, you're going to get the player board, which is going to have the different locations, whether they be mountains or forests or the mines or even the swamps, and then you've got the beach over here. These are the four different cities, and in each of the four different cities, you're going to have quests. These are going to be coming out. Whenever they get completed, new ones are going to come. There's always a specific rarity item in each of the different towns, which you shuffle up and deal randomly. And then there are four equipment cards, which is a total of five equipment for each of the city shops. After you've gone ahead and done that randomly, then you're also going to have players select a character. Players will select a character based on the person who I think last went to the beach. And they're also going to get five coins. You're going to draw out four of these profession cards here, which are going to have requirements on the back of them. And then you're going to draw Draft them. One at a time you'll be selecting one and passing it. Uh, the rest of them, select one pass until you only have three left, and those will be your specific professions for the game, but you'll be able to acquire more as well. Players will also be able to take these uh, birds here, or aviary cards, uh, in reverse turn order, selecting one at a time, and they'll start untrained, and you'll place them on the aviary space of your board, and then you're pretty much ready to go. You go ahead and select the meeple of your choice, or popper of your colored choice. So in this case, Blue would get this one here, along with his bird and uh, everybody else with their own color, as well as they're going to be using these tokens here to indicate whether they've successfully accomplished certain goals. So this player here will be put this here next to the one, and when they accomplish the first goal, you'll put it here, second, and then third to win the game. After that, everybody's got their resources that are required. They're gonna take their popper and their bird and place it based on the location. So that's gonna be black. This is going to be pink. Yeah, this one over here is white, and this one over here is blue. So his bird and him are going to go there. And if we had, let's just go ahead and place the rest of these guys out as well. And then you're pretty much ready to go. You've got your die over here, which is going to be utilized when you want to press your luck a little bit. Equipment cards will be put into the decks here, as well as the fact that in your first turn, you'll be able to buy one equipment card from the cities uh, that you are currently stationed at, and then you will replace whatever you buy with a new card. Quest cards will be set aside as well, so whenever you complete quest cards, you'll take these and place them down once again. These are additional professions, which you'll get as you complete professions on the side of your board. You're only going to have a total of five professions, professions as well as on the uh, left hand side of your board a total of five different equipment cards you can use in your inventory and then aside from the board here are the mine forest mountain beach and swamp decks which you will be utilizing as you move on to these spaces some of them will be traps others will be like te te treacherous monsters and then others may give you some sort of benefit or event these are the outcome decks and based on your player color is what deck you're going to take and these are going to indicate whether or not you're successfully able to defeat certain monsters or complete certain objectives throughout the game. Everybody has their own deck and they're all the same but they're all shuffled randomly and when you flip them over you're going to see whether or not you're successful in defeating certain things. The game will come with the gold coins in five and one denominations as well as a handy dandy symbol reference and of course the rules of play and the rule book for the game. And last but not least, this nice little bag to hold your tokens in. And that's pretty much what you get in the game and as far as the setup goes. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you a two-player variant for the game, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. 
So here we have a two-player variant of Popper's Ladder. Everybody has their specific canary or swift based on the one they chose. They've got their five gold currency, and they went ahead and bought something from the stacks. And he bought something for three, so that's going to cost him three. And then he bought something for two, which will cost him two. He's actually special. He has a unique ability that lets him actually get holy potion, luck potion. So get potions based on the value of at least five, or under five, I should say. And, of course, they've got their outcome decks. We'll set these to the side for right now. Neither of them have successfully accomplished any of their uh, missions here, so we'll set it to the side as well. And then each character has their own professions. Fleetfoot, Diviner, Smithy, and uh, this guy over here. Where is, where is his? Maybe I'll just give him three new ones so I don't see him. Um, we'll give him Unlock, Redeemer, and Strength. And they have a requirement, so if he gets Pearls, Demon Teeth, and if he gets Iron Ore, he's going to be able to flip this over and get an ability. And then he'll be able to select from four, he'll draw four, choose one, and place it out, and he can get a new one. And as he acquires the specific ingredients for these specific type of professions, he'll be able to earn more of them and use them as passive abilities. These guys here, if they're an equipment... Uh, then they're just going to have the ability to turn them to the side and you can use them twice before they get removed. You can sell them if they don't get turned and if they have a little sword symbol on them that means that they can, they're a weapon and you can just have one of them used during battle. You have a total of five items over here and five professions on the side and your outcome deck should be shuffled and ready to go. Let's go ahead and start with the first player, and we'll go ahead and select Blue over here to begin. And Blue can move one of his characters, which would be his popper or his bird here, and to one of the adjacent spaces based on these little bridges here. So if he wants to go over here, he'll draw a card from the deck associated with it, and then he'll read it. And this one is a Sandration, which is you may sell an unused potion to collect five gems, place a potion on this card. And this will stay in play until three potions are on it. He doesn't have any potions, so he's done. He's went ahead and moved, and then he acted on a location, an encounter happened. His bird can go to the same place, or somewhere different. So he'll go over here, the little birdie, and we'll flip over a new one of these. This is a lighthouse, and it says when this card is drawn, you get to place six uh, gems on it from the bank. A popper, which is this character here, can collect three of these gems and miss their next turn if they wish to do so. And it stays until there's no more gems left on it. Both of them have moved and encountered a space, and these things are going to stay there until their specific um, cards say otherwise. So now it's Black's turn. Black will go over here, he'll draw a card, a gambling den. You can place one to four gems uh, from your purse onto this card, and your purse is over here, it's where you have all your money. And then you're going to be able to test your luck, and you'll roll a die, which is this one here, and it'll tell you what happens, and it goes away, um, what does it say, the gambling den stays in the rest of the game. So basically it stays there until a card says otherwise, and it'll just sit there, and hopefully people will get money from it. And I just want to go over to the swamp here, and flip over one of these cards here, and you place six gems from your purse on this card to learn one recipe in learning. These are recipes in learning, and you'll basically just be able to learn one by flipping it over. It's going to have a cost of six, though, which is pretty expensive, and this will stay until basically two recipes in learning have been learned. Back to this player here again. So after you've both taken your movement and action, you'll just go ahead and move again. So this player can go ahead and move again and flip over another card here. Uh, it's an Assassin's Guild, and that's going to do something as well. Now remember, additionally, when you move your one space for free, you can move additional spaces, but it'll cost you one gold for each additional space you wish to move. And you're going to go ahead and put it in the, in the bank over here when you go ahead and do so. Additionally, if you choose to move onto a space that has that's basically the location, like Grey Haven over here, uh, you'll be able to complete certain quests provided you're able to succeed them. Like this one lets you discard a giant goal or an eagle from your trophy room, which is going to be over here, over here whenever you defeat creatures or put them over here. And you'll be able to gain the rewards for this card as well as the quest, which will go over into the journal here. If you complete three quests, that's going to give you one way of winning the game. And you'll be able to also purchase an item and sell an item in this little shop here. So if you purchase an item, the cost is the top left. And when you sell an item, the sell price is the top left as well. But you're going to get half rounded up. And if it's spent already once, you get nothing for it. Uh, these specific ones here are the most powerful. And these ones, not so strong. But if you do choose to buy something, you will put a new equipment from the deck into the shop. So that is what the space is good for. New quests will come out whenever you complete one. So if this one happened to complete a quest, he put it over here. That's one of three he needs. And then you're going to take a new quest out and put it over here. Pretty, pretty useful. And of course, you just be moving around. Let's go ahead and show you something else, like this enchanted log. So if you get an enchanted log or any specific type of material for your professions, and you do happen to need it, in this case, he needs toadstools and he needs, uh, let's see, fairy dung, which is the, the, the green ones here. He doesn't need the log, but this player does. So if he ever comes down over here to pick it up, 
he will actually be able to take this log and place it under his profession. And if he gets all three of them, that's how he's going to flip over this profession and gain a new one as well as use the specific ability. This one gives him plus one to his strength. So these are very, very useful. This player over here will go ahead and flip over some more, show you what they do. There's a swamp lady that lets you get rid of critters to get, and you'll get money for that. And this one over here, uh, that's a treasure chest. Whenever you have keys, you're able to turn those keys in or roll dice, depending on the type of key, and you'll collect coins based on whether or not you can open these chests or not. Let's go over here. Let's try and find a monster. Here's another, here's fish scales. So if you needed fish scales, which he doesn't, you'd put it over there. And then this one over here will fly over on this side and let's see what we get. Ah, finally, a monster. That's a hill giant for seven. Now this is what we call, uh, it's either gonna be a trap or an encounter. These you have to deal with. And if you wanna, you can't pass through these areas here unless you deal with these specific monsters. So how you do that is you flip over a card from your outcome deck and then you're gonna add that value plus any other bonus values you might have or items that you may use. And if you're able to match it or are greater than it, you'll defeat it and you will get the either gold, the item and or specific type of ingredient, or you'll get the value of the card and you'll place it in your trophy room. Three different reasons why you'd want to do that. If you get 40 gold at any point in time, you can discard it to get the virtue of generosity, which would give you one point. And this one over here is if you get a total of 40 points in value of monsters, that would give you another point by discarding those. If you defeat a dragon, that would give you another one, which have you win the game. <laughs> if you had three quests done, that would give you a point. And then the last one is if you learned five of these recipes, that would give you a point as well. So a bunch of reasons why you'd want to use, depending on what you're doing, these different um, rewards. And you only get to select one of them. But regardless, he rolled a, he has a six and he has no bonuses. So what he can do is he can take this die here. He can spend one gold to try and chance it. And you're going to roll this die and gain the value. Uh, that's a zero. There's zeros, there's twos, and there's ones. If he were to roll a one with that six there, he's able to defeat that monster. He put it in the trophy room, or he collect the five gold, or he draw an equipment card and discard this card. And if not, this is just going to stay there, and it is going to be basically a hazard for somebody else to deal with at a later point in time. And that would basically be what blue does. You go ahead and draw one of these cards over here. It's another fish, and they just sit there. And then black's going to go and flip over some more cards. There's a dwarf's beard. Does black need a dwarf's beard? He does. He does. So we'll go ahead and take that, put it under that. And that is going to be one of three that he needs for that specific profession. And then over here, we'll move this one over here and place a mine out. That's a dragon heart. Does he need a dragon heart? He doesn't, so it stays. And the game will keep going on like that. Remember, whenever you play these outcome cards, just put them to the discard pile, and you will reshuffle this if you go through the entire deck, which is not super likely, but it could happen. And that's it. The game progresses up until the point where you can get three of the five different conditions. If you can get the gold, if you can get 40 strength from monsters and discard those, or discarding a single dragon, if you can get three, uh, learn five recipes, or if you can complete three quests from these areas over here, and play will keep going until somebody's able to do that. And once that happens, the game is over, Popper's Ladder, and uh, that player is going to be doing a little victory dance because they are now the tournament leader for the land, and uh, they succeeded. <laughs> so let's come up and talk about it. I think I pretty much covered everything. There are a lot of equipment cards, so let's go over a couple of those. Uh, there you guys are. And most of these are going to be, be some interesting ones that involve either potions or they're going to be ones that you can use multiple times, as well as sometimes you'll get things like dragon teeth, uh, which will be used in ingredients for specific professions. So fight potion. When you fight a hazard, you can draw two outcome cards and choose one of them. You've got the warhammer, which adds one to your strength. And then you can roll the charm die, which is that die with the smiley faces on it, um, and add the number rolled to your popper strength as well. That's really good, but it costs six. Fate Stone lets you look at the top four cards of your outcome deck and, and sort them in any order you'd like. There's a Time Potion lets you basically have an extra turn at the cost of four. Dagger, roll the Lucky Charm and add the number rolled to your strength. Uh, Might Potion, add two to your proper strength. Uh, Dragon Heart, an ingredient. Wooden Axes, all kinds of stuff. There's a ton of different types of equipment that you can get in here, as well as instant uses, and some that are going to last you the entire game, hopefully, like swords and daggers. The quests do... Uh, require certain things. Some of them are going to be like to bring certain monsters to certain areas. Some of them will require you to lose items. Others will have, make you find gems and shipwrecks or find coins in a chest. And they are all pretty different. They're all pretty unique in their own way. Some of them are easier than others and some of them are definitely more challenging. But sometimes those challenging ones can be a breeze for a certain player just because they happen to be getting certain things throughout the game. 
all the different locations all have a card or two that will allow them to be all shuffled up and from the board as well as the discard pile and put back together. So you're never going to run out of cards for these guys here. The spread in this game is going to be roughly anywhere from like 3 to 10, maybe 4 to 10 as far as monsters go. Like a bandit is 4 and a vampire is 7. That's generally what you're going to be finding. So regardless if it's the first turn of the game or the last turn of the game, you could find any monster that could be from the low point spread to the higher point spread. And losing monsters doesn't actually set you back for the most part. There are some hazards that will keep you in place, which are kind of irritating. And that can happen in the game if you're just not lucky or you didn't build up enough but like most games that have this specific type of style you're gonna see that there's a spread as to what can happen what you can get and there's also a chance that you're gonna start off strong and kind of get weaker and then get stronger and it does this little like workflow and sometimes it'll it, it's gonna fluctuate and that just depends uh, that's kind of like a neutral thing for me because I've seen a lot of games do that and for a lot of those games uh, specifically the ones I've gotten in not most recently I suppose that function kind of like this their spread is way way long and you can fight something that's like level 50 at level when you're level one this one doesn't really function like that you still have an opportunity to beat most monsters when you're dealing with the cards there are certain ones like the dragons which you probably aren't going to be able to beat at the very beginning of the game but as you progress it'll be easier for you and you can obviously move away from them and deal with them at a later date and that is going to be the luck involved you never know what you're going to get in any of these decks here the artwork in the game is great. I like it. It's kind of retro feel. It reminds me of the classic, uh, classic style video games. Maybe just maybe like Super Nintendo style artwork or whatever. But it's fun, and I really I really dig it. So I think for the most of you, when you see the artwork, you can kind of make up your own mind. Some people are probably gonna be on the ups, and some people will be like, eh, not for me. Uh, I'm not sure how they're gonna do certain things like these big poppers and whatnot. I always like these big pieces. It reminds me of trekking the national parks. So that was really cool, but. Who knows what it's going to be like later. Uh, the die is an interesting random effect that will allow you to gain specific bonus points or not, depending if you want to use gold or not. And you can't push it too far, which is nice as well. Uh, the quests are fun and enjoyable and they're very different. And the items and equipment are very unique in their own way. They all do different things throughout the game. I enjoy this game because I think it's probably one of the better ones as far as the spread goes when dealing with the harder and easier monsters. There's not a huge amount of penalty. There's not a huge amount of things you can do to take that with your opponent. So sometimes it's going to be really nasty uh, in certain games and sometimes it's going to be really nice. In this one, most things are pretty neutral to even kind of nice. And a lot of the events are usually going to be, ah, uh, it does nothing to you or you're going to have some benefit for succeeding in some way previously or currently. Uh, there's different cards that will let you gain certain recipes quicker than other people. And at the end of the game, things start speeding along because you're going to have a lot more passive abilities that you can unlock. And a lot of these passive abilities do some cool things. Let's go ahead and look at a few of them. When you learn, when learned, immediately collect eight gems. The recipe can only be used once, but it still counts towards your learned recipes. This one lets you steal uh, one gem or two gems from an opponent uh, whenever they are in the same region as you. You can roll that die. Uh, let's see, Foresight. Once per turn, you can, the popper can peek at the top card of a region deck uh, before moving. That's pretty useful. And then there's ones that give you strength, so your strength can kind of increase. Now, you can only use one equipment or one weapon card as far as your battles go, but there's a ton of other things you can use to increase your strength throughout the game that makes it more likely for you to be able to defeat those dragons. And there's, a, there's a, probably like one dragon per deck. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this game. This game works two players, which is also nice because a lot of these games I've played do not work two players, and this one does a great job of that. Three and four players as well. And there's a backside to the board over here that will show you the uh, three and four player board setup, which is different than the two player one, which shows you here. So it gives you a little more choice. All the characters have their own unique ability. Some of them will start with more gold or more potions, but they all function differently. So overall, a solid little game. This is going to be one of those games where I think you're going to check it out and based on what i've said so far you can kind of make your own mind up i know some people that are going to be like not for this game just because of the random element of drawing the cards from the deck and you never know what you're going to get maybe you can't defeat the monster your first turn so now your opponent is ahead of you and then there are going to be people who like that the talisman style feel the adventure feel the the feeling of making your character grow as the game progresses up to the point where you're hopefully going to be able to get those three out of the five virtues and win the game popper's ladder solid little fun game but definitely for certain people are you that certain person if you are check down below in the description and take a look and see if you want to pick up popper's ladder which i think will be on kickstarter you can go and look that for yourself
Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in watching more videos, check us out here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that little notification bell button wherever it's popping up here. As well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarters, lists, and more. We're giving away tons of games there, as well as our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. And don't forget to take a look at Popper's Ladder down below. If you like an adventure game with a little bit of chance, a little bit of strategy, it's all kind of mixed in together, this one might just be for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to getting out of this room because it's hot.